Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Vinny Verga, who's the owner of five floor covering stores in the New England area outside of Boston. Vinny, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you this morning? I'm good. I've been wanting to catch up with you. Last time we talked, we did tell our audience that you were operating five floor covering stores that range anywhere from, I think, 9,000 to 26,000 square feet in space. They're all Big Bob flooring outlets, which is on the you know outlet side of the range of service. And I want to catch up with you about that. But first, you know, around the 4th of July, what happens at retail? Is, is there some good volume or are people out on the lake or what's going on? For us, historically, we used to be open on the 4th of July, and we actually closed on the actual holiday this year because we do such little business that day. But before the holiday and after the holiday, we were exceptionally busy. Even the Thursday before and the Saturday and the Sunday immediately following, Mm -hmm. very, very slow. Yeah. Now, we've watched the stock market. It's up over 17000 now. You know, I guess some people are saying that we're starting to hit a little bit of a stride after a very slow first half of the year. To tell us how market conditions are for you up in your area. Well, it's interesting. January through April were as soft as we've seen since we've opened. We only opened our first store in really October 26, 2011, so mm-hmm. two and a half years, almost three. So that was very slow. May was exceptional. May, we we made up everything we were missing in the first four months and then some. And then uh, June was softer again Mm -hmm. uh, than we would have liked. And July is off to a stunning start. We're very excited about what we see right now. It seems like things are picking up. Builders, contractors, and even retail replacement are all showing signs of strength we haven't seen so far this year. Yeah, isn't that funny how people have been scratching their heads? As 13 ended, uh, we had some momentum building there. And then I guess, are we all going to blame this on this cold winter? Because you are definitely up in New England, so that, that definitely had an effect. Why do you think things softened out the first of this year? Well, full disclosure, I am a dyed-in-the-wolf true Republican. <laughs> so, okay. And I am no fan of our president. I yeah. think he stinks. Yeah. And I think... Things about raising the minimum wage, some of the things they're doing to the coal industry, a variety of different things that he's done this year, I think, have depressed the market. I think a lot of consumers are scared, and a lot of businesses, when they hear about some of the different things he's trying to do and get done before his term expires. And I think, honestly, if he hadn't done a lot of those things, it would have been a little bit of soft at this because of the, the weather, and then it would have broken April like it usually does. But I, I think he just scared the bejesus out of people. How about that? Well, that's very interesting. And we have watched. He's the least popular president that we've ever had. He's now below Jimmy Carter. But So what you're basically saying is consumer sentiment and how they feel where we're headed, the direction we're headed. But sentiment, I did notice in the last month, is starting to tick back up, and you're starting to see that with your cash register as well, aren't you? Absolutely. I mean, we're a big-ticket destination purchase yeah so if people are at all nervous yeah they're going to hold back and wait so yes but we're definitely seeing it and the last week has been other than just the, the time around the, the holiday but the last week 10 days has been exceptionally busy mm-hmm. and exciting lots and lots of big projects getting started lots of interest i mean it's really exciting it's what we thought we were going to see all year long to be honest with you it feels like it's finally breaking loose all right, so and just a reminder, too, just a couple little points I want to make for people that don't follow you as closely as I do. You grew up in this business. It's one of the reasons I like talking to you. You know, your father was in the business. You were kind of an apprentice under Merv Berlin. And then you spent 13 years with CCA Global. You were president of Flooring America. Now you're out. You have a very aggressive plan, too. With five stores now, I know you're going back at this point and buying some of that real estate so that you own it. Your plan with this Big Bob Flooring Outlet is to open maybe 25 more stores right? Absolutely. We're very excited. We're very committed. We have a plan right now, you know, this year, two and a half years into the program, we sit at five stores doing over eight and a half million dollars a year in business. Mm -hmm. We are about to close on the third of our five buildings. Two of them we leased, we could not purchase, Mm -hmm. but three of the five buildings we will own with a real estate value of almost six million dollars. And that's all because of the business. It's paying for everything. Yeah, we we can't wait to open more stores. I I think our challenge is making sure that we pick great locations and get good people and that we don't grow too fast, making sure that we 
expand at a rate that's sustainable from a capital perspective. But no, we're very bullish. Yeah. Okay. Since you are very strategic in your planning, when you look back at the end of 14, do you think this will be kind of level with 13 as far as your performance or or do you think the year might be off based on the results of the first half? We are pretty much ahead by a decent chunk already. All right. And that's prior to hitting the stretch. So the first four months we were down for sure. Yeah. We made that up and went ahead in May. In June, we were flat, and then we see things trending up for July and August and September. So if I were forecasting, you know, from a budget perspective, I'm actually exceptionally conservative. So yeah. I'd probably budget 3% up. But I honestly think we'll probably see somewhere between 12 and 15% growth at the end of the year in our in our volume over last year. Well, I hope you're right. I'll check back with you, and we'll see what happened. But two weeks ago, Big Bob's the franchise group, had an annual meeting. I know you were there. What were some of the key takeaways from that meeting? One of the big things they were doing was the roadmap for success. Mm -hmm. So it was all about key elements that you need to have in place in your business to be successful. So for me, one of the things they had was several speakers talking about best practices inside our industry and from uh, outside speakers who are experts in specific areas. I I took a half dozen things back, and we've already implemented three of the half dozen in the stores today, and we're getting results from them already. So we've just really enjoyed the conference. I guess those are probably all proprietary, and you probably don't want to share them with me because then you'd reveal all your cards in your hand. But can you give us a little hint about some of the areas? I'll give you a glimpse. I mean, one of the things they talked about, I've always been a big proponent of getting healthy deposits up front. Yeah. And a lot of people in our industry don't do that and wait to collect the money the day of installation after the job's done. We stopped doing that a long time ago. But what we're doing now is we're getting paid in full up front. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we confirm the order. So you look at a business like ours, and if you're getting paid in full up front, That is about the equivalent of 15 days of cash for us. Mm -hmm. In 15 days of cash, in our business, is somewhere between a quarter million and $350,000 in cash. Yeah. That's a lot of cash. Didn't they roll out some kind of the, um, there's kind of change in the format of what these outlets look like inside, aren't they? Yeah, they just keep getting better. You know, they're listening to their members, they're listening to their vendors, and they keep fine-tuning the kits to 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 the program. You know, they've got footprints right now that fit every need. So if you had a a smaller showroom as little as 5,000 square feet, they've got a really good program for it. Or if you have a monster like we have one building that's 26,000 square feet, Mm -hmm. it scales to 26,000 square feet. And they've just done a really good job of making all the elements available so that you don't have to worry about that. It's it's pretty much there, and if you want to use it, you can grab it, pull it off the shelf, and put it to work for you. Yeah. Now, when you brand your stores up in the – I know you're not in Boston, but you're kind of surrounding Boston with your stores. You're kind of centered around Auburn, aren't you? And we have a store in Auburn, which is uh, Worcester, Mass. Yeah. We have a store southwest of Boston, Norwood, a store south of Boston, which is Whitman. We have a store, really, that's in Providence. It's called Seacock, but it's really the Providence, uh, Rhode Island market. And we have a store in Manchester, Connecticut. So those are the locations that are currently open today. Mm-hmm. So do you brand them? I know it's Big Bob's Flooring Outlet, but do you put a Verga in there or anything like that to kind of give a little bit of your own personal ownership into it? No, we really don't. It's Big Bob's Flooring Outlet. You know, we usually just focus on big box flooring and all of our advertising. We don't hound on the outlet. It's certainly in the sign and in the branding. Yeah. But uh, big box flooring is what we're talking about in our commercials and, and all of our advertisements. And it works exceptionally well just as it is. Yeah. You know, there's a big trend toward onshoring and even buying local. So how do you communicate that message? Because you are, uh, you know, a local owner of these stores. One of the things that attracted us to the group initially was, their advertising is outstanding. Mm -hmm. And so they have a series of spots that work really well for us in New England that feature a female person who is driving the ad, professional talent. And then in some of the ads, we actually have my brother, who's my business partner, and I are in the ads where we talk about locally owned and operated, but part of a national group with huge buying power. We run a mix of 90% what I would call promotional ads still brand building, but they're promotional, all right out of the Big Bob's kit. And then we run about 10% of what I would call brand building or image-oriented spots where we're explaining that we're local, we're giving customers visuals into the store so they can see how huge the selection is. 
And we find that that combination is working very well for us and, and gets us the message that we want to deliver to most consumers. Well, Vinny, one little side thing I know about you, you're also a musician, which I think you use to relieve stress. Are you so busy, do you have time to still play music? 